definitely going to discuss um, the best moments of this Phillies first half of the season. There's a lot of games you look back and you think, wow. You know, I, the first one that came to my mind was April 12th when they were at Fl- uh, and they were at Florida at come from behind win when Shane Victorino hits that uh, home run. That was a crazy game. So we will definitely get to that. Definitely some more highlights. So make sure you guys tune in at 9 o'clock. Phone lines are open 856-227-1360. So we put the first half behind us for now. We must talk about the second half of the season. Like I said, they have a comfortable four-game lead over the Florida Marlins. But I think it's time for the Phillies to talk about possibly getting a fifth pitcher. Well, another pitcher to this rotation. And a lot of rumors this week was um, the Phillies may be the leading candidates to land the Toronto A's, probably the best pitcher in the American League, the best pitcher in the league, in Roy Halladay. For me personally, I know that the Blue Jays have personally came out and said that we will listen to offers for Holiday. But for me, I think that this is a, just a little bit of talk from Toronto. I think that they're definitely, they know that they can't sign him. I'm not really sure what the deal is there, but I do know that I don't think that they should trade him right at this second. I think that if they do tra- trade Roy Holiday, similar to what the Minnesota Twins did with Johan Santana, is that they wait until the off season, wait until they got to the best possible deal, and then open it up for the team to have a contract extension talk with the pitcher. In that case, it was Johan with the New York Mets, and then trade him, or possibly trade him come next off uh, next trading deadline, which would be next year, uh, July 2010. So for the Phillies, I think the question is, would they trade? Now, the, the thing about the Phillies, would, would they trade a lot of these prospects for Roy Halladay? And, and that's the thing. The Phillies really don't have like a guy like Matt Laporta, who was so big in that CC Sabathia trade. Um, Laporta was um, the big chip in that CC Sabathia deal that sent him to Milwaukee. So the Phillies really don't have that in the system. They do have a lot of untouchables. There's Kyle Drayback, Michael Taylor, Dominic Brown. There's Lou Marsons. There's a lot of different guys the Phillies, I think, are hesitant at this point to move. And if you talk about the best pitcher in the game, like Roy Halladay, the Blue Jays are going to be asking for a lot. And I think that the initial reports right now were saying that, yes, Toronto is asking for a lot for Roy Halladay, just as they should. Another question here is, should the Blue Jays trade Halladay at this point? I believe at this point they're 7 eight games out they started off really good and then you know they were kind of going to tailspin especially being in that division with the Yankees and the Red Sox and even the Rays coming around so to see Toronto kind of wanting to move their ace at this point I I think it's a little bit of a story for them just to get themselves in the news I think that if they should they should wait until the offseason to trade him it makes more sense because you got to offer the extension and for the pitcher obviously for Holiday for him to come to the Phillies if Phillies can't give him away have him as a rental pitcher they would want him around for five six seven years I think that Roy Holiday would work out well in Philadelphia because I think that he's a ground ball pitcher that would be perfect at Citizens Bank Park but the thing as I said Toronto is asking for a lot and they do want the team to tag on one of those huge contracts that they have because the Lugis have a lot of young guys in their system they want to bring up Alex Rios or Vernon Wills have two huge contracts. Uh, both of them are about five years in length. I, I think Vernon Wells was seven at one point. It's probably at five or four at this point. So they want the uh, team that trades to gets Holiday to also take on a big contract as well. The Yankees would be another team that would be great. F- would be uh, would be great to pick up Holiday, obviously. But I think that. For that to happen, I mean, they would have to kind of think about that because Toronto moving him to the Yankees or the Red Sox, can you really see that happening? I really don't. If you you kind of want to move him outside of the league, and I think the Phillies and the Dodgers would be the leading candidates just because I think the depth in their farm system, and they would be able to pull it off. So we'll see what happens there. I don't think Halley is going to be traded in a couple of weeks. I think that they're going to wait until the off season for that to happen. Another person the Phillies may be going after is future Hall of Famer. Pedro Martinez, and the Phillies have been scouting Martinez. Martinez has been throwing for a lot of teams over the last couple months. A lot of teams were unimpressed by him, but the Phillies seem to have a lot of interest in him, and they've been scouting him, and they watched him pitch twice this week was the initial report, and there's a lot of strange things with Pedro Martinez whenever there's rumors about him, because it seems that a lot of false information comes out. A a Dominican Republic newspaper reported that the Phillies already offered that one-year, $4 million deal for Pedro, which you know, the Phillies aren't completely denying, but Romero is kind of tight-lipped about this. Um, Roberto 
Amaro Jr., who is the Phillies' GM. He's very tight-lipped. He says that, yes, there's mutual interest, but we have not signed anything just yet. And if you've seen uh, Pedro throwing for the Phillies, he's got the uh, Phillies hat on, the red hat on, and he's throwing. I don't know what he's throwing. I don't know what what his velocity is at this point, but it's a good question as to what he would bring to this Phillies team. He would be a back end of the rotation guy. You know, can you get a lot of innings out of him? And that's what the Phillies really need. They don't want to. They don't want a guy that's going to go five to six innings a uh, a game. And uh, if you've seen him the last couple of years in New York Mets, ever since 2006, he had the hip injury. He he has not been the same. And he he'll only go five to six innings. And I I don't know if he would be the best fit here in Philadelphia. The crowd would be very tough on Martinez because they have noticed he's. They know he has pitched for some big-name teams in the past, but it would be interesting. And another report saying that the uh, Phillies general manager says he wasn't even there for Friday's Pedro performance. So who knows with Pedro Martinez? We will see at one, at soon, at some point, I'm sure in a couple weeks, they'll either bring him, they'll sign him, or they will say that they won't. Not sure in regards to that. And uh, some other Phillies news before we turn our attention to other teams sports possibly the nba for the phillies they released the fan favorite chris coast and the astros ended up claiming coast off waivers phillies placed him on waivers and actually the phillies actually released him and then coast was um had claimed on waivers by the houston astros coast was hitting 245 in 45 games for the phillies with a pair of home runs and the phillies let this fan favorite go to make room for Raleigh Banias. I think they're really pleased with what Paul Bacco is doing as the backup role for catcher. And before they released Coast, I think on Thursday, I thought Carlos Ruiz, Ruiz was hurt in that game. So I was a little surprised by, by that news. But Coast will be backing up uh, Pudge Rodriguez in Houston. So we'll also check the scores in baseball towards the end of the show here. Turning our attention to the NBA here. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of news. As you know, free agency is about 12 days in, and there is still no word about Andre Miller, but it doesn't seem that he will be returning to the 76ers at this point. The first, uh, there's been a lot of rumors here because it seems that there was a rumor that the Sixers, a report from the Daily News, the Sixers offered a one-year, $6 million deal to Andre Miller. One mil- one year, six million dollars. It's almost as offensive as the Mike Bibby offer, but this is even worse because if you think about this guy who has been right there since two thousand and seven when the Sixers when the Sixers traded away Allen Iverson, he has led them to the playoffs two years in a row, turned the team around, and I think it is completely unfair to see them offer a one year deal to them. So now it seems that on Saturday morning there was a report that's saying that the Sixers are working with the New York Knicks Knicks and working out a sign and trade deal that would send Andre Miller to New York and bring back Chris Duhon to Philadelphia. The Knicks obviously need a veteran point guard. They went after Grant Hill. They went after Jason Kidd. So they need a veteran leadership role in the team and especially want free agents and big names to come to New York. So if they end up landing another huge free agent in 2010 like a LeBron James or a Chris Bosh that they have somebody there. And Andre Miller would be great there because he he's a true pass first point guard. He's something that the uh, Knicks really need. The Knicks could offer him about $4.8 million the mid-level exception perhaps and um, it, it's interesting and I think it's it, the more that you think about this I think that that Andre Miller got lowballed by the Sixers because a one-year $6 million deal offer to the unrestricted free agent, it's a slap in the face, just as his agent said, and I completely agree with him. And I guess the Phillies do, I guess that the Sixers do want to go young by having Jerome Holiday play the point guard position at this point, I'm not sure, but we'll keep our eye on the sign and trade deal because it could work out for the Knicks and the 76ers. So we will come back here. We'll get updated with today's scores and some other news, a little bit of Flyers news. We'll come back right here on Sports Sunday. The phone lines are open. The number is 856-227-1360, 856-227-1360. I'm Christina Maxwell. This is Sports Sunday. Sports Sunday here. I'm Christina Maxwell. Welcome back here. Got a couple more minutes. We're definitely going to go over the scores. Make sure you guys tune in at 9 o'clock. We'll be back on here talking more about the Phillies and their first half of their 
of their season, as well as other NBA and NHL news. A uh, quick note on the Flyers here. It turns out that the Flyers, as we've been talking a lot about Chris Pronger,